Okay, so we're knocking out two birds with one stone today. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, questions to ask on the process and how we do things. And so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, but I don't wanna expand on the subject too much because if this isn't something you do yourself, but you're having someone else do it, um, there's no reason why we should be involved in engineering their process. It's, uh, it's disrespectful to other businesses and how they do things, okay? But uh, we'll explain this one more time, then we will uh, kind of move off the subject. Right now, these are, and notice I have gloves on, these are the doors for the retired race car that we have. And um, lo and behold, as it always seems to be, when it comes back from the blasters, there's always surprises. You can see that the driver door on this one had been in some kind of pretty nasty accident. There's a bunch of slide hammer drilled holes in it. And the uh, passenger side one has a few little dents in it from it obviously having some, some historical issues as well. Okay, and also the other thing that's in this booth right now is the Packard. It's over here out of the frame, you can't see it. Um, but I did show you it before we uh, started talking. And what you can see is, you can see there's effectively a little bit of body filler everywhere on the car. But again, it is immensely thin. It's there as corrective, it's not there as a cure. Um, it's very translucent, so you, you can see through it almost everywhere. Um, so that's, that's a good inclination how it's being used. It's being used properly when you see it done that way. Now, because that car was originally in an acid etch primer, which we're about to put on this, um, I could apply more acid etch over where the metal's been sanded raw. But we're gonna go to an epoxy on that. Now, these are gonna get literally an acid etch primer first. But the car itself is going to get an epoxy. The epoxy is a DuPont product and it's called a DTM epoxy. DTM standing for direct to metal. So it's an epoxy that's formulated that you can spray directly to metal. It doesn't have to be linked to an acid etch or anything like that. We always implement the acid etch on the initial when we get a car back from the blasters because it's our best and only opportunity to really get an acid etching process onto a very clean, uncontaminated metal. So we will never skip that process. We can go back and apply more once the body work's done to the raw areas. You don't necessarily want to use an acid etching primer over body filler. It's not really formulated to link to that so much. But you can put an epoxy over it. Okay, so again, raw steel, we use a acid etch primer. Okay, we do our body work over the top of that. And then we apply an epoxy, a DTM epoxy, a direct to metal epoxy. It just means that it can be used both ways. You can apply it over a worked area, like it's gonna be on the Packard, or you can apply it directly to metal. It's, it's no harm or foul either way. It's a, uh, it's a very well-designed engineer process that we use, and uh, we're not gonna break those ranks. Um, that's how we are comfortable with it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way. It's just the way that we know it works in the restoration world. If you're having your car done at a body shop, I'm sure they have a formulation that works for them as well. Because after all, somebody's got a warranty to the work, right? So that's where we're at. So next thing you're going to see is I'm going to apply an acid etch to this, and then I'm going to put an epoxy on the actual packet itself, all right?
A good friend of the shop just recently acquired a barn find sprint. These wire wheels were on that sprint. Now don't worry, these are not uh, Barani rims. These are uh, some English make that we're not really aware of. All we can tell is that they were made in England. So he didn't care for them, and we have an idea for them. So what we did is we had them powder coated. We'll have the knockoffs uh, chromed at a later date, but for now, we're kind of exploring the idea of what we're going to do with them. Okay, so a couple days ago what you saw was me putting a couple of coats of epoxy on this car. Now if you look closely, you can see where the body fillers under the epoxy start to come up again. The reason it is is because we have sanded almost all the epoxy off. We're using the epoxy basically to preserve the work that's under, but we're also using it to kind of fine tune the final shape of the body. At this point in time, if you're doing this at home, what you really need to pay attention to is your style lines. Shadowing from light kind of gives you an inclination of how sharp these things should be. Right now you can start to see some of the stamping from the, the body line start to really sh show their themselves and they look very clean and sharp. Excessive amount of filler or excessive amount of primers, these lines don't look so clean. If you think about the fine steps of this, just know that once color's on something like this, it accentuates the positive and the negative. So if your style lines aren't sharp, they're going to show it by the time you put actual color on the car. And again, remember, millage is everything. We don't want a ton of paint on here. We don't want a ton of primers. What we want is a minimal amount of those things, but with excellent coverage. That's where you get durability from. That's where you get less shrinkage from. Okay, shrinkage is, un is unavoidable. Uh, what shrinkage is, is basically where the paint starts to collapse once it starts to dry. When you have a ton of paint and a ton of surfacers on a car, that shrinkage will be exaggerated. Okay, um, so the minimal amount of undercoating systems you have in place, the less shrinkage, the better the overall fit and finish will be of the car. So as you see from here, everything's starting to sharpen up really nicely on this. From here, we're going to do some more fine tuning, like you see down here. One last coat of epoxy to seal it all up. That'll be lightly scuffed. We could potentially use a servicer, but a servicer is effectively something you're using to kind of level off the body body's nice and sharp like this, you would avoid a surface. You would use just maybe one more round of an epoxy to really seal in all that hard work, and then you would go to a color. This car is getting very close, and you can see all the labor is starting to show up. Now, that's something else. We can't take body work for granted. The guy I have doing this right now has been doing this for 20 years. He really knows what he's doing. He understands the process and how minimum amount of fillers and primers are better. So I don't expect somebody at home to get quite the same quality of, of uh, results that we would here at the shop, but if you're just doing this for the fun of it, you should be able to get something close to this. This is starting to come out like a really nice car, and it's because of the experience and the understanding of what the components are that we're putting on them and how they work, and using them to our advantage instead of overusing them.